In this video, I'm going to show you how to jack up your car using a service jack. Don't forget to check out the clip at the end of the video for more information on the channel. And in case you don't get a chance to, let me know your feelings. Share it on the video. That means liking, disliking, commenting, and subscribing. Let me know what you think. And that also helps the channel grow too. Before I proceed, just want to make sure I tell you, this is if you're going to be servicing your car. So doing brakes, suspension, changing winter tires to summer tires, rotating your tires, anything like that. Um, if you are in need of something, for example, you have a flat tire and you need to change that with your service jack, there's a separate video for that. Check that out. This is just for servicing. Well, the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure you're parked on a flat surface. Now, unless you're actually working on the rear brakes, uh, you know, pulling off calipers or anything like that, you want to make sure you engage your parking brake, whether it be a handle or whether it be a foot pedal like that, make sure it's engaged. Next up, you want to make sure you chalk your wheels. Chalk appropriately. If you're lifting up the back of the car, you chalk the front wheels, you're lifting the front, you chalk the back. And of course, if you happen to have a jack and four jack stands, you're lifting all four, um, the whole car up, all four wheels are off the ground, you don't chalk anything. But anything like uh, simple chalks like these, which you can get online for like 10 bucks, or even a block of wood, or something like that over there, a sledgehammer, something where you can just prop it onto the wheel so that it doesn't roll forward. Next up, locate where your jack points are on your car. Now virtually every car is gonna have what the, this is right here. This is called a pinch weld. This is where the car has this kind of lipped where it kind of joins together. Virtually all cars have it. Now you should look for points like this here, where you'll see it's kind of a heavier piece of metal that's multi-layered. Um, some of them, although this is not one here, some of them look like this, it'll look like a rolled piece of metal. Um, but this case is something like this here. That's where your jack will go. Um, it's a stronger piece. If you try and jack from like right here, it's going to bend. Uh, same thing. You may look under here and think you'll jack, you know, up on the, the subframe over here. Now, some of the older pickup trucks, uh, SUVs that are body on frame, everything, this is actually a very strong piece of, of framework you can jack off of. But a lot of these cars now have aluminum. Uh, subframes or anything that's this big uh, turn that goes here and if you try and jack in the middle you actually may end up bending it so be cautious of that uh, you know there's other points you can jack from though for example you can jack sometimes on suspension suspension components like over here or particularly right over there with the subframe mount sometimes you can sometimes you can live lift from the front frame which is sorry, right here. But uh, know that a lot of cars now, they come with under uh, under uh, underbody uh, covers, underbody carriage covers. They're plastic covers that cover over this. So you no longer have access. So some cars, you can't even do that anymore. Sometimes you can lift. Now this is a front wheel drive car. But if it was rear wheel drive or all wheel drive, the differential would be here and you can lift from the differential. It supports the weight of the vehicle. It's very strong. So it should be able to support it no problem. Also, some front wheel drive cars, now this car doesn't have it, will actually have a central mounting point for the control arms. You'll have a center piece there. You can mount a jack from there as well. And again, before you get to jacking, know where you're going to put your jack stands and where to associate, uh, where to kind of put everything, where it should all go. So for example, if I was going to work on this wheel, I would jack the car up from the pinch weld over here. And then I have access to the front frame on this car. Uh, so I would put my jack stands into there, lower it into the jack stands. So the front of the car is lifted, give me nice good leverage on the wheels and begin my work. However, if you're doing like an oil change, you can't do that because the jack stands will be in the way. So, I mean, if it's available, and I'm just using an example here, I would lift the car at the front on the frame and put my jack stands in the pinch weld or the suspension component if it's available and strong enough under here. So know where you're working, let's make sure you kind of plan ahead and situate yourself. You don't want to be jacking, raising the car up, oh crap, got to drop back down, and so on and so forth. So make sure you're positioning yourself. Now, let's say you're doing something like an oil change or something like that. Then uh, you don't have to worry about anything with the wheels. You're lawfully just jacking up the car, going underneath and doing your oil change. However, if uh, before you lift the car or anything like that, if you're doing anything like your brakes or suspension or anything like that, if you're using power tools, no problem. You can lift it up. Use your air gun or your um, or anything like that and zip those lug nuts right off. However, I'll show you in a bit. Um, you can't actually do that if you're just using hand tools. So if you're loosening all these by hand, then you want to make sure that the wheels are still on the ground so it gives you leverage 
to actually what crack the bolts, so actually loosen them. Otherwise, when you try and loosen them uh, and the wheels are already up in the air, the wheels are just going to spin. You're not going to get the leverage. So, no, do that. Uh, right now is a good time to do that before you get into anything else. Okay, so because I'll be working on this wheel here, uh, I've decided that I'm going to chalk up at the pinch weld that's closest to the fender right over the edge over here. And I'm going to use another smaller pinch weld that's kind of a little more inboard to uh, use for the jack stand itself. I've already chalked up the front wheel. Now, you'll notice I have a board there. Uh, now, if you happen to have really solid, solid surface, concrete, anything like that, you don't need to do that. You're all good. But if you happen to be working in a dirt area, grassy area, asphalt, then putting the board actually really helps. So one, if it's asphalt, it prevents uh, the jacks from sinking into the ground and damaging your uh, driveway. If you happen to be working into a grassy area or anywhere else, even actually even the asphalt itself, then putting the piece of wood prevents the jack from starting to sink in and then sink sideways, which could happen, right? If you have soft ground or anything like that. And then of course that can pose a safety situation. So putting the wood actually helps bat, um, even out the weight distribution, keeps everything kind of balanced and steady. So if you're in a situation like that, that block of wood could be very helpful. All right, so uh, I'm gonna show you exactly where I jack it up after, but enough talking. Let me actually show you guys what it's like when I jack it up. All right, so let me show you guys what I've done here. You can see the jack is sitting right over here. The pinch weld is not completely centered. Not ideal, but it'll hold, it'll be good. Now, when you're putting it up, now you gotta be careful though, because some cars, sometimes, like see this e-brake cable over here? It may be closer situated, closer over, lines can be running, anything like that. So you wanna be double checking and making sure that you're not interfering with anything. Now, the jack, you see I've lowered it. That's where I jacked it from though. And uh, I still leave it here uh, because it'll, in case something should happen, anything should happen, this will give you an extra support. Technically, nothing should happen. This, these things are strong, but hey, you never know, right? But you can see what I've done there. Now, if all goes well, now you don't, we want to be careful. Don't do anything. Just put your hand and give the car a little shake. You shouldn't see any movement from the jack, the jack, or sorry, the jack stand. Everything should be steady. All right, so let me show you this part here now. Now, you can see the front, I have the chalk there. I released the parking brake just to show you guys this. Because let's just say you're fixing the parking brake. There's a snapped cable or something like that. Or you're working on the front where this is not really applicable. Um, if you don't, let's say you're not using the power tools. You're just using hand tools and you're breaking the bolts manually. You try and put pressure on this, all the wheel is going to do is spin. You put something on here and go, it's just going to spin and you're not gonna be able to get that off. That's why I told you if you're doing, now if you're using power tools, air tools, anything like that to take these off, then it should be able to zip those off, no problem. However, if you are doing it by hand, you wanna make sure just to loosen, don't take them off completely, just loosen the bolts, just until they're, they move freely. Don't have to pull them all the way off. You wanna still make sure it doesn't roll off the, the car before you lift it, but you just loosen them um, so that you can, uh, when you come up here now, you can just take them off by hand or with the, or with the tools or anything and they'll come off easily. All right, so I finished the work on that wheel. Uh, so now it's just a matter of removing everything. So you take your jack stand, hopefully it hasn't moved. So you can just relift it, but if it does, double check. Um, one thing I don't know if you guys noticed, I should have mentioned it before, but when I, was, when I was lifting, I was spot checking I was lifting just to make sure nothing's bending. Because especially if you work on an older car, the pinch welds could get rusty, old, they could bend. So you check for that. Same thing now, although the jack shouldn't have moved, I'm still gonna be double checking just to make sure that it, you know, it, it does get to the pinch welds, no problem. And then you just jack up, remove the jack stand, and then drop it down.
Now, you notice I didn't drop it all the way, right? If you're doing an oil change or anything, you just drop it all the way, you're done. But if you're doing, for example, wheels or anything, I don't drop it all the way. Uh, I stop it just as the wheels made contact to the ground, and I torque up all the lug nuts and the star pattern. You know, whichever car you're doing, you know the pattern for your car, and then I drop it all the way down. All right, so I've tightened up my wheels to specifications, so now I just drop the jack down, take out the chalk in the front, and you're all done. Now the YouTube stuff. I always love a great feedback. So make sure right off the bat to subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much. Um, now, if you like something on the channel, definitely like it. Give it that thumbs up. If you disliked it, thumbs down for sure. But let me know why. That's what the comment section are for. And I, I, whatever it is, if you like something, then I know it's working. And if you dislike something, then I know something didn't. But let me know why so I can continue to build a channel and make it better for me and for you. Um, aside from that, commenting is great too. So if there's something you can do better, something you can do different, any tips for other viewers, I'm all about that too. So make sure to put that in there. If you have a question about something that's maybe not even related directly to the video, leave that for me as well. Other than that, I want to thank you very much for watching and I will see you all next video.